This dark and narrow passage leads to St. James's Place. This is Mitre Street, from where Watkins, the constable who found the body, came. I have no reason to go that way. Church Passage. It must be opposite the Imperial Club at 16 to 17 Duke Street. Let's go to the end of this lane, Watson. Hello, you must be Abraham Solomonovich, am I right? Yes, that's me. But I know you. You brought a lad to my place to take care of a cat, and I loaned you my mask. That's me. May I present? Dr. Watson, of course. Delighted. And you? I have known for a few days that you are a detective by the name of Sherlock Holmes. Is that so? You don't miss a thing, do you? It was the children who gave me away. Am I right? Uh, they didn't want to, but I gained their confidence by offering them a small comb and half a cake. They made a good deal out of it, so I don't blame them. However, I must request, as a personal favour, that you do not reveal my identity. You have my word. Curiosity is just killing me, as you may have guessed. Would it be breaking an oath to confide in me the nature of the investigation that you are leading? Does this spot where we are now in Mitre Square mean anything to you? A demon lives in this city, Mr. Holmes. These unmentionable acts degrade the human race and put the Jewish community in terrible danger. Lots of rumours are circulating, but they are but rumours. I see you're leaving the Imperial Club. It's a stone's throw away from Mitre Square, and the two recent murders were most probably discussed in there. Do you know if anyone from the club saw or heard anything that night? Yes, Mr. Holmes. That night, three members of our club saw a woman talking to a man at the very spot where we are standing. A few minutes before the body was found, at the end of this passage. Fantastic, Holmes! Calm yourself, Watson. There is nothing at the moment to suggest it was the victim. Uh, can we meet these members? I am afraid that won't be possible. As soon as the police heard the evidence of these men, they were sworn to silence. I understand. But you are working for the good, and I must tell you what I know. One of the three men, my friend Joseph, left that night with two other members of the Imperial Club, Harry and another Joseph. It was around 1.35 a.m., perhaps a bit earlier, when Joseph, uh, not my friend, but the other, the Aldgate Butcher, exited. He saw a man and a woman in discussion at this very spot where we are. These men must have been about 16 feet away from the couple. That's about right. So Joseph, the butcher, said to the other two, while pointing at the couple, Look, I don't like going home alone when I see this kind of people here. My friend Joseph looked at them without noticing anything strange and didn't understand what he meant. They had the look of two rather unkempt people but no more than that. After the murder, did these three men tell the police what they had seen? Not quite. Harry stated that he hadn't seen the couple. As for Joseph, the butcher, even though he was the one who commented on them and pointed them out, said that he couldn't remember anything except that the man was about three inches taller than the woman who was five feet tall, no more. My friend Joseph, on the other hand, did his best to cooperate with the police. And what did your friend Joseph say? What did this man and woman look like? The man must have been 30 years old, about five foot seven inches, light complexion, and a fair moustache. He wore a loose, dark jacket, a grey cap, and a red scarf around his neck. 
but he said that he only saw him for a brief instant and it would be impossible to recognize him. And the woman? He only saw her from behind. She had her hand on the man's stomach and seemed to be pushing him. He said that he remembered that she was small, was wearing a black jacket and a black bonnet. After his testimony, the police took him to see the clothing of the deceased and Joseph said that they looked identical to those of the woman he had seen. Like I already said, he only glanced at the two as he was headed with the others in the direction of Oldgate. One final question. The Imperial Club is a Jewish club, isn't that correct? Indeed. Thank you for your help, Mr. Solomonovich. Bah, it was nothing. We must, at all cost, prevent this demon from striking again. And the police seem to have some difficulty in doing that. I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Holmes. Well, let's find the spot where Edow's body was discovered. Watson, we are now in the exact spot where poor Edows tragically ended her days. This spot is very dark, Holmes. That is probably why our murderer chose it. Let's see, we'll need a lantern. Take the lamp, Watson. The head is turned towards the left. The murderer must have been on the right side of his victim. Let's look at her from the front. There is but one wound, Watson. It goes from the left side and descends in a slight oblique towards the right side. The cheeks were slashed to make them thinner. The nose was cut. The eyelids were cut off. These intestines were pulled out altogether to grant access to the abdomen. The main incision goes from the sternum all the way down to the groin. The murderer opened this abdomen as if it were an animal carcass. A kidney was removed. The uterus was removed. A thimble is located right beside one of the victim's hands, just like Chapman's sachet of pills and Stride's pastels. Do these objects spread out by the victim remind us of anything, Watson? The inside of the thighs is clean. Uh, once again, there were no sexual relations between the victim and her murderer. Part of this apron is missing. We will follow up on that shortly. My goodness, Holmes, it was a slaughter. Understand, Watson, that our killer had neither the time nor the conditions to bother with the niceties. He had no more than seven or eight minutes at most to kill the woman, open her up, and all the while in total darkness. Holmes, it's a woman, a poor victim you're talking about. Consider all the time this man lost and the risks that he actually took by cutting the victim's face and the lower abdomen in around 20 precise spots, especially the lungs and the liver. These attacks, which I considered gratuitous, are, in fact, nothing of the sort, and have as much sense as the removal of the organs. Watson, we must now consult our timescale. We began in Dutfield's yard, but this time we will try to recreate the actions of certain people. In this case, those of the two policemen. One thirty a.m. P.C. Watkins didn't see the corpse while on his rounds. If P.C. Watkins did his rounds properly, and there is no reason to doubt this was the case, as he discovered the corpse a quarter of an hour later, the murder hadn't yet taken place, and there was no one in Mitre Square, unless they were hidden among the shadows. Enter Mitre Square via Mitre Street, Watson, and stop and try to see me with the lantern. I will be where poor Edow's corpse was.
I see you, Holmes. Perfect, Watson. Let's look at our timeline, Watson. Very good, Watson. Thus, we can categorically state that the murder had not yet occurred at half one. One thirty-five a.m. A man and a woman are arguing at the entrance of Church Passage. The man came from Aldgate. One forty-two a.m. P.C. Harvey arrives in Mitre Square. It should be noted, Watson, that the constable didn't enter Mitre Square. He could not have seen the corpse lying on the ground. But would he have been able to see a man sitting or standing? Go to the church passage entrance, then come back and try to see me while holding your lantern. I will stay at the spot where the victim was discovered. I see you, Holmes. You had to proceed into the square in order to see me, something Harvey didn't do. It is possible that the killer was still there. 1.42 a.m. PC Harvey arrives at Mitre Square, but does not go in. The murderer may well have still been there. 1.44 a.m. The body is discovered. Let's put the murder of poor Eddowes on the timeline, Watson. One thirty-five and one forty-two a.m. The murder would appear to have taken place between these times. That is to say, within seven minutes. Agreed, Holmes. But does this really prove that our killer had the time to perpetrate these two murders? Let's look at our timeline, Watson. There, Watson, we are now certain that the murderer really had the time to commit these two murders. Incredible! Let's look at our deduction board, Watson. 